Today, the Flight of Liberty Bell, live coverage of the second United States man into space shoot. Now here is NBC News correspondent Frank McGee. The weather at Cape Canaveral, which had delayed the two earlier attempts to make this space flight, had remained marginal throughout last night. At 3.30 this morning, officials met near the launching pad, studied the latest weather data, and decided to go ahead, and they began filling the missile with liquid oxygen fuel. For more details now, let's check with the anchorman for the NBC News team at Cape Canaveral, Peter Hackus. Once again, you can feel the tension here at Cape Canaveral. After having gone through this suspense twice before this week, the weathermen now tell us that barring further unpredicted changes, we have go conditions for Liberty Bell 7, both here and at the recovery area. The word from Pad 5 is, booster and capsule countdown progressing smoothly after a brief hold. Astronaut Gus Grissom, the 35-year-old Air Force captain, is inside the capsule waiting. We're told he's still cool and calm, ready and eager to make the flight 115 miles up and back to become the free world's second man in space. Peter Hackus, NBC News, Cape Canaveral. Astronaut here at Mercury Control is America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard, whose job is capsule communicator. He'll be in constant radio communication with Grissom during the flight. Also in hand today is Space Administrator James Webb, who came down a couple hours ago himself to observe this important step in Project Mercury. This is Robert Lodge at Mercury Control. medical area. The weather vanes are still turning around on top of the field hospital building. Medical technicians and doctors are standing looking at the sky and looking at helicopters that are getting ready to take off in case of trouble. The medical building itself contains a real field hospital ready to move into action should any emergency occur on or near the launching pad. The astronaut's personal nurse and the mighty nervous nurse right now, Lieutenant D. O'Hara, is standing out front of the hospital as the final seconds of the countdown tick away. Right nearby are marine helicopters ready to rush to any point on or near the Cape should trouble occur. The hope of these people is that they won't be needed today. This is Richard Bates at the forward medical area. Here at the forward observation area, a half mile from the launch pad, the only movement visible is the continuous stream of vapor coming from the lower part of the redstone. There is a blinker signaling a warning to everyone to stay off the pad. Uh, everything is quiet, still, and cleared. The crane is standing by, ready to evacuate Grissom if he should have to leave the spacecraft before launch. That will be removed at two minutes to launch time. The working superstructure has been rolled back. Grissom sits in the capsule, awaiting his climb into the sky when he may peer through a window that may permit him to sense the climb as he streaks past cloud formations that have been ever so slowly moving over and away. I suppose Pete's doing pretty much what we're all doing, just standing by. The cherry picker has now been moved back, so it is T minus two, possibly a few seconds less than that. It's Commander Alan Shepard, the first astronaut. He is in voice contact with Grissom inside the capsule. He, better than anyone else, perhaps knows what's going on in Grissom's mind at this particular moment. Minus two minutes. It is T minus two minutes. And now the missile stands completely alone. The cherry picker has been lowered and removed. Inside that black bell-shaped cone at the top of the redstone. 
Air Force Captain Virgil Grissom. This is the flight surgeon, Stan White. The graph is of the surgeon there was this the... This is John uh, Powers in Mercury Control. I will be giving you the count beginning at minus one minute in about 15 seconds. I will give you 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and count it down from 10. That's Colonel John A. Powers, public information officer for Project Mercury. We'll hear him give the countdown. T minus one minute and counting. seconds and counting. Periscope has retracted. T minus 15 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition, lift off, lift off. Okay, control and pilot. Report lift off and I'm watching off. Just recorded, it's a nice ride up till now. Trajectory is A OK. Flight surgeon reports the pilot is in excellent physical condition. Gus reports he's picking up a little bit of the noise and vibration. The fuel is go, one and a half G. The cabin pressure has settled down to five. Trajectory reported, go. All systems reporting, go. Cabin pressure holding 5.5. Fuel is go, two and a half Gs. Oxygen is go. All systems are go, and Gus Grissom sounds like a very confident test pilot today. Trajectory is confirmed by tracking. The reports here in the Mercury Control Center are A-OK -okay all the way. Ground track is excellent. Cabin pressure is holding. Oxygen is go. Standing by for engine cutoff. The tower. We got tower jettison confirmed by the pilot, confirmed in the control center. We got capsule separation. Gus Grissom has just reported. He, is, he has just reported zero G and reported that boy, that sun is really bright. Manual handle is out. The sky is very, very black. The capsule is coming around into orbit attitude. He hasn't seen a booster any place. He must have lost it. He is pitching up into proper retro attitude. He has manual control of his spacecraft. indications in the control center are that his landing point is exactly as predicted. 
Gus Grissom reports all axes working properly in the control system. Gus Grissom exercising manual control over the Mercury spacecraft now is yawing his craft. Grissom reports that he is running just a little bit late in his work schedule. He reports he has not been able to see any land as yet. Gus Grissom just told me that he was on the window for reference, but he found that it was such a fascinating view he almost forgot to work. <laughs> <laughs> 